Hello and welcome to What Did I Miss, where today I'm going over the third episode of the third season of Star Trek Discovery and looking for easter eggs, references, and symbiotes. This episode, titled People of Earth, gave us a much better perspective on the current state of things by showing us what has happened to Earth since the USS Discovery left their time. We were introduced to a new cast member in this episode while also reuniting Michael Burnham with the rest of the crew. But before I get into it, let me know what your favorite part of the episode was and if you like where the show is going now that almost a quarter of the season is in the past. Here, I will break down the episode and list out any references that I picked up and explain some other things you may have missed or have questions about. Also, if this is your first time here, please hit that like button and subscribe as I will review these episodes each week as they come out. This is What Did I Miss? Once again, this is your weekly spoiler warning as I will be going into this episode in depth. So please, if you have not watched it yet, go ahead and do so, then jump right back here. The show starts seemingly where the first episode ended, with Michael Burnham composing a message to the USS Discovery. In it, she explains in some detail about what has happened to the Federation during this time and the universe in general. She explains that at first, dilithium supplies began to dry up, and then in a moment they became unstable and destroyed any vessel with an active warp core in an event called the Burn. She also states that no, no one understands why it happened, which does beg to question why people are still using dilithium at all. Burnham also explains that she has changed personally in this time and even started to believe that she will never see the crew again. But just as she does, she gets a signal that the ship has arrived and this of course catches up to the end of the second episode of the season in which we saw Michael pull the USS Discovery up from the planet using Book's ship. After hugging members of the bridge crew, Michael also spent some time with Saru to catch him up on things. One thing that I thought was interesting is that when she introduces Book, she mentions that he is not from Earth, but because of his name being Cleveland, a well-known cartoon character from Earth, that there must be a connection. I remember thinking the same thing when we were introduced to him as not being from Earth, because Cleveland cannot be a well-traveled name. Burnham also discusses the burn with the crew and explains that millions of people died during the event. I thought it was interesting that she specifically started her story 700 years ago, meaning she was starting it after the events of Picard. Michael explains that she has picked up a Starfleet transmission from an Admiral Tall, and now that the spore drive of the Discovery is online, she can reach the source. Before they go, Burnham concedes that Saru should be captain of the Discovery based upon his many accomplishments, especially bringing them safely 1,000 years into the future. I love his line that it will be their privilege to make the future bright. I've always liked Saru, but I've really liked his character since last season and his evolution from a prey species. Last episode also established that he could talk down Philippa Giorgio, at least as anyone else would be able to, which shows that he has the strength to sit in that chair. The first scene after the intro shows Tilly straightening some badges on a memorial wall. I may be mistaken, but it looks like there is a special memorial to Arium there as well, as it looks like part of a suit is kept there. Tilly begins to explain to Michael how she misses people who are close to her but have now been dead for a thousand years. I was wondering if she actually looked them up and learned all of these events or if she is just hypothesizing. It really has me wondering how much of the past that we know does the crew of the Discovery also know, and if they are keeping it ambiguous for a specific reason, which is to maybe not step on the toes of the show Picard, who could create events that could shape this time period, or this could mean that the show is setting up a plot where the crew of Discovery jump back in time to perhaps coexist in the same time period as Picard so as to stop the burn from happening at all. Tilly also brings up missing hummingbird cake, which I had to look up and make sure was not made with honey hummingbirds. It is in fact made with bananas, pineapples, and pecans. Tilly says she understands if Michael let them go during the time she was waiting for them and that she also notices a change in her. We then see Book arrive on the ship and get greeted by Giorgio. I like this scene because it showed that even with a smart person who knows themselves like Book, they can be flustered by Giorgio. Michael shows Book the ship's dilithium cache and gives him what she agreed to. Book also warns her that they will be a target with all this dilithium. Michael asks Book to come with to Earth in order to use his ship to cloak their dilithium cache. She then has a conversation with Saru about her plan, in which he says that he is surprised by her recent behavior especially that she did not want to be considered for the captain's chair. She explains to him that she's had to adapt to survive without them 
and needs time to feel like she is home again. I think this scene was pretty powerful, and I like that they acknowledge the passage of time and how it affected her character. The Discovery uses its spore drive to travel to Earth, much to the surprise of Book. I don't understand, though, why no one else in a thousand years has developed spore drive technology, and I wonder if they will explain that or if maybe they did and I missed it. If you know the answer, please let me know in the comments. They arrive on Earth and are greeted with a less than friendly welcome. As they approach, they speak with a member of an organization called the United Earth Defense Force named Captain Ndoye. They enact a force field around the planet, which to me looked very much like the Tholian web technology we have seen in the original series as well as the show Enterprise. Ndoye states that they are in violation of their laws by approaching the planet, and Saru states that they are unaware of their laws as they are a Starfleet vessel on a long deep space mission and are attempting to reach the Federation, which they believe to be headquartered on the planet Earth. Ndoye states that she recognizes the ship's composition as being from the 23rd to 25th century and does not understand how they survived the burn, to which the Roos states they were not at warp. This was a bit confusing to me because earlier in the episode they showed ships that were not at warp suddenly exploding, so I'm not sure if this was just Saru not fully understanding the event and giving an illogical response. Ndoye and members of the EDF arrive on Discovery in an instant and begin to sequester the crew, while Michael and Book quickly slip in a uniform as to not cause suspicion they are not part of the crew. Giorgio and Michael spend some time talking where Philippa says she understands how Burnham has grown during her time away from the crew. Michael then joins through and Ndoye in the ready room, where Ndoye catches them up on what has happened to Earth since the burn. She states that the Earth has been under attack from Dilithium Raiders and it had to become overly protective because of this. She also states that the Federation left Earth over a hundred years ago because staying on Earth would make the planet more of a target. We are then introduced to Adira, a member of the Earth Defense Force who seems to be very interested in the spore drive while Stamets and Tilly try to redirect her away from it. Tilly's line, is it going to be like this everywhere we go, really reminded me of the way the crew of the Voyager felt after they were met with a lot of hostilities during their first contacts with new races, especially in the season five episode named Counterpoint, in which the crew were routinely subject to inspections by a race known as the Devore who did not allow telepathic aliens through their space. Before Adira can find out anything, the Discovery goes to red alert as there are ships approaching them. Ndoye states that they are raiders led by an individual known as Ren, and that they are here for their dil dilithium. Saru tries to make contact, but Ndoye states that it is fruitless and that they know who their enemy is. Saru states that she has no jurisdiction on the bridge and hails the ship, which they respond to by threatening them. Ndoye then says that Discovery must now leave orbit but she is unable to return to Earth because of something blocking their transporter technology. Doye states that if they do not leave orbit, they will fire on Ren's ships, and that could start a war in the name of Starfleet. We then cut to Michael, who meets up with Booker and says she has a plan. She mentions an incident between them on Donato 7, which is in the same system as the infamous Klingon space station K7, which is known for their trouble with Tribbles. Book is trying to get a buzz on, but is then told that will not work because he is drinking Synthahol, which has been on the show many times and must contain some alcohol, but not a very high amount. We then cut to Stamets and Tilly, who realize that someone has sabotaged the ship so that the Earth Defense Force cannot leave. They believe that it is Adira, but do not understand why she would do it, but think there is more to her than she is letting on. Book and Burnham leave the ship with all the dilithium, much to the surprise of the bridge crew. Ndoye states that she will fire on the enemy ships instead of allowing them to live, leave with the dilithium. Burnham hails Ren and says she will give away the dilithium if they agree to leave. She has a plan, but Book is unsure that Discovery will act in the way that she expects them to. As Ndoye and the EDF prepare to fire on the ships, Saru instructs Lieutenant Detmer to move the ship in between them so they will take the hit. Detmer initially refuses the order, fearing the safety of this maneuver. I think that her reaction pretty much puts to rest any idea that Control had somehow survived within her, and that is why she's acting weird. As I said after last week's episode, I believe that she is suffering from PTSD and perhaps survival guilt due to the events of last season. Detmer reluctantly follows Saru's orders, and the Discovery takes damage from the incoming missiles. Suddenly, Booker's ship decloaks and the enemy ships power down their weapons. Burnham arrives on the Discovery with Ren in tow. Ren appears to have a computerized helmet on, which at the time left me wondering if he was some type of AI. 
Ren and Ndoye begin to argue about their issues when suddenly, Giorgio kicks Ren in the leg and removes his helmet, which reveals that Ren is in fact human and living on Titan, a moon of Saturn. Ndoye believed that the people living on Titan were self-sufficient, but Ren explains that because of an accident that is no longer the case. When they came to Earth for help, they could not communicate and were instead destroyed. Saru and Burnham try and broker a peace between them and an exchange of good and services is made. While this is going on, Stamets catches up with Adira and reveals that he knows that she is stalling for time and wants to know what she is up to. He also explains what Discovery is and what the Spore Drive does. She admits that he is correct and that she was hoping to spend some more time on the ship. She has been hoping to find a Starfleet ship and she knows who Admiral Tall is. Adira asks to stay on the ship and help the crew find the Federation. It turns out that while Adira is a human, she has also been carrying a Trill symbiote who is, in fact, Admiral Tall. The Trill are a species heavily featured in Deep Space Nine, with two cast members being members of the species, but were first introduced in the fourth season episode of The Next Generation named The Host. In it, Commander Riker is briefly joined with the Trill symbiote after the host is killed. It just so happens that Jonathan Franks who played Commander Riker, directed this episode of Discovery. I wonder if having Ren be from the Moon Titan, which is also the name of Captain Riker's ship, as shown in the Lower Decks, is also a nod to the director slash former cast member. Saru explains that Trill are able to carry host symbiotes and that the hosts have access to the symbiote memories. Burnham apologizes for not including Saru in her plan, but explains to him that she has changed during her year on her own and that she needs time to find her way back to the person she was. She takes her place as his number one, perhaps another nod to Commander Riker, and says goodbye to Booker. She goes to the bridge while most of the bridge crew are, are on Earth at Starfleet Academy in S San Francisco. We see Tilly hug a big elm tree as they reminisce about how all of them knew the tree from their time at the Academy. This may be the same el elm tree that a young Jean-Luc Picard carved the initials AF into while he was at the Academy, as discussed in the Next Generation episode named The Game. The crew enjoy their last five minutes on the planet as we see what Earth looks like in the far distant future. I like this episode, as I felt it helped the pace of the season move along with a meaningful storyline. It was nice to see Earth, and now we know that they are no longer in the Federation and what the future has done to the planet. The fact that they are very xenophobic is an obvious allegory to a lot of the political unrest in the world currently, but I will save that for other channels to discuss in detail. I really like that they are showing these characters evolve over time, and that the events we see on screen do not just happen in a bottle and are then forgotten by future directors. Having Lieutenant Detmer and other members of the crew question their abilities and show fear really make the show more believable for me, and I look forward to seeing how they handle it this season. Even having Burnham be a bit darker now is a good character move for her. It shows that this year has left a mark on her that can't just be changed with a new hairstyle. After three episodes, I like the season and look forward to the addition of the Trill castmate, Grey, who will no doubt be joined with the symbiote Adira is holding. But let me know, what did I miss? Let me know if you like this season so far and what you expect to happen. Also, do you think the Federation was responsible for the burn? I will continue to review these episodes weekly and look out this weekend for my video on the first episode of The Mandalorian this season. I will see you next time on What Did I Miss?